Have you ever wondered why digital video games get discounted less than their retail copy counterparts? If you do a quick search right now, you'll find that video game prices are not standardized, not even among themselves. You could pick up a digital copy of Watch Dogs 2 on the PlayStation Network for $60, or you can head and buy a retail box copy for $43.49 from Target, or better yet, $39.99 from Amazon. And here's Far Cry Primal. You could save $11.29 by simply buying the retail box copy instead of a digital version. You could also take a look at Nier Automata, if I'm saying that correctly, $25 cheaper when you buy the retail copy. That's almost 50% off, which is unbelievable. These huge discounts are pretty common actually in most games, just so long as you buy the retail boxed version. Isn't that strange though? So today I'm going to talk just a little bit about why this is the economic norm in the video game industry. It seems almost counterintuitive at first glance, physical games being, on average, less expensive than their digital twins. After all, shouldn't it be the opposite? When you sell a retail box of a game, there are loads of additional costs. You've got the cost of making the game in the box, you've got distribution, so packaging, materials, and shipment, and handling, and all that kind of stuff. Now add in the labor cost for employing everyone to do all those tasks, then how about, hmm, maybe the big ticket item, the cost of the middleman? Stores and companies, both digital and retail, they gotta be paid to as the point of sale. So add all of that up and shouldn't retail versions of games cost at least the same if not more? You would think so, but there are a few economic reasons why this is the case. The first reason has to do with just pure economics. During the last 10 years, the trend of digital versus retail sales has been closely monitored, tracked, and they've come up with all sorts of fancy graphs like this one. In seven years, the trend has reversed almost in a perfect mirror-like pattern, with nearly 80% of game sales being digital, which was the opposite back in 2009. As retail sales continue to fall, this trend will fall with it. As the demand for retail box copies falls, so does the control of its price, or the elasticity if we want to sound fancy. When something is in low demand, the price of it will subsequently drop faster than something that is in high demand. That's just the way of the world. The more people want something, the higher the price can be jacked up. The opposite is most certainly true, and one of the biggest causes of quick price drops with retail games. Because it's easier and just more convenient to pay digitally, those prices then naturally stay much higher. It's because the opportunity cost associated with buying a retail box copy is that you are giving up that convenience and you're trading it for something. That exchange being your time, your energy to receive a discount. Whether it's a trip to the store or having to wait for a physical game to arrive at your house, you're giving up that for a discount because everyone else values that discount a little bit less. And because you're willing to make that trade off, you'll get the discount sooner. But as time goes on and people get more attached to technology and demand things instantly, that minority shrinks up even more. Which brings us to the second reason why retail games get discounted quicker, competition adjustments. We live in an era where retail stores are in decline, a time where it's much harder for Amazon to sell a retail box copy of Bloodborne than to just give someone a digital key. It's critical for distributors to compete with digital sales and they often have to discount their games sooner to make them more enticing to buy. Obviously, I'm talking about making sure that they sell all of their stock. Because when publishers make video games, they send boxed copies to distributors, of course. And two things can happen. They get paid then and there or they enter a partner contract. EA doesn't wait for Amazon to sell a copy of Battlefield 1 before they get paid if it's the former. Retail copies of Battlefield 1 are sold to Amazon for a predetermined price and EA gets paid right away. It might be $40 per copy, maybe less, maybe more. It's then up to Amazon to sell those copies at a premium to make more money, hence the $60 price tag. Which is why you see video game prices vary from store to store because they've got full control over the price. When these companies buy large quantities of video games, they inherently then have to sell them or those games will just stockpile up somewhere in a warehouse. To make sure that they sell all of their stock, they often have to play with that price and eventually drop it, which is why you see discounts a little bit sooner on the retail side. Now, of course, digital copies on Steam and direct from console platforms don't have that constraint, do they? 
thus making them more flexible and resistant to price reductions. On the other hand, when publishers and distributors enter a partnership, it's a different story, but the outcome is the same. They work together to sell games together at predefined entry costs. However, under a partnership, it's imperative that the in-store stock depletes before the publisher drops the prices on their digital counterparts. This is when digital games get discounted, when the cheaper yet harder to sell physical copies get swooped up, creating an overall lack in supply in the retail game availability, pushing those individuals to find digital copies for similar price points. And since retail games go on sale cheaper and faster, they often have to reduce the price of the digital game counterparts to meet these customers at their maximum willing price. Thus, how discounts work in the video game industry. This particular relationship was illustrated by none other than the CEO of Ubisoft during one of the earnings calls of the company, and I'll drop a link in the description if you'd like to learn more about it. But um, just a warning, those are very dry reads, trust me. So yeah, just a little bit of information on the economics of selling video games, the pushes, the pulls, and how this little component of the industry works. Hope you guys learned something. And if you'd like to support the channel, go ahead and thumbs the video up and subscribe to Downward Thrust, or consider checking out my Patreon at patreon.com slash downwardthrust. Hope you guys have a super duper awesome day, and we'll see you in our next video.